we magnify your holy name. Your children have come to worship you in this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice. We shall rejoice and be glad in his. For he is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And he has given us our most precious possession. The gift of life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Worthy is he. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the great I am. He is Emmanuel. He is the Lord our God who is with us. Oh, no matter where we are, no matter where we find ourselves, whether things are doing well or bad, he is still God. He is still good. And we praise him today. We welcome you to this live broadcast. This is Call Me TV Network. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are in the heart of the people's Republic of Brooklyn, New York. Hallelujah. Coming to you live from our headquarters Thank you, Jesus. at 390 Evergreen Avenue. Glory. In the heart of Southburg, known as Bushwick, Amen. Brooklyn, New York. Amen. Amen. On behalf of Reverend Kelly Wallace and the congregation of Paul Ministries yeah. representing Kneeling Ambassadors of Worship. Here in our headquarters in Brooklyn, we greet the family. We greet the family of Paul Men Ministries in Baltimore, yeah. in North Carolina, in South Carolina, in Virginia, hallelujah, in Florida, and even in Jamaica, West Indies. But to you and you and you that are watching us this day, you're with us because the word of the Lord says that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. It's time to worship. Hallelujah. It's time to worship. So we thank you. We ask that you invite, click, like, tag, share, spread the message. We are here to inform the world that God is still very much alive. And you're going to watch him work today. Hallelujah. So we go. Just want to put a few announcements into the atmosphere today. You know, we're living in the midst of a global pandemic, and even though many of our cities are opening up, people are returning to work slowly and surely. Our children are still at home. Many of us are still, still under a government sanction of staying in because the numbers are still climbing. But we who are blood believers, hallelujah, of the Most High God, we understand the times that we're living in. God has birthed this ministry to reach into your here and today to share with you and proclaim some good news. So we're excited about what you will experience today here in ministry. We're excited to offer you the opportunity of the continuing and beyond this day to extend this up to us. I want to give you the telephone number for our prayer line where you can reach out to a ministerial staff member any time of the day or the night. And that number is 347 702 5688. That number again is 347 702 5688. Join us on Wednesday for our midweek call to worship service, which is at 7 p.m., where our pastor lays before the altar of God to intercede on behalf of you and the world that we live in. Amen. Prayer works, but it also changes things. Hallelujah. It changes its conditions and circumstances. But it begins with a humble heart. It begins with the work of kneeling before Almighty God. For He is sovereign, and we submit to His perfect will. But we want to give you the opportunity of submitting your prayer request. So again, that number is 347. 702-5688. And on Friday evening, we have a faithful Friday fellowship because it's the end of the week. And many of us need a little dose of encouragement from all of us we have experienced. And because we are a family, because we're children of the Most High God, we 
live in love, but we lean on Jesus. And so we invite you to, to call in and just pay attention to the telephone number that's on the front that's going to be recorded. It's the 701 number. We ask that you join us there. But today, today is a special day. A day unlike any other day where we receive brand new mercies. Today, today I want to extend to you an opportunity to pay attention to what you will hear and experience. Amen. And we want you to stay tuned for what's to come because today is the kickoff for our Men in Ministry series. Hallelujah. Charles Ellaby, and I can tell you that he is a multi-dimensional man. He's a humble man. More to come. You're going to hear from him by our pastor. But save the date. Save the date for Saturday, June 20th, with Reverend Anthony Hicks, who will be with us from Sweet Spirit in Macedonia Baptist Church. Hallelujah. Another son of Brooklyn. Hallelujah. Return on Saturday, the 27th, with Reverend Maureen Abrams from United Missionary Baptist Church, another great man of God. We thank God today for what you are about to hear. We're kicking off this men's ministry and series sponsored by the men's department of Neil and Ambassadors of Worship, the mighty men of valor. Hallelujah. The theme is divine messengers for Christ. And the scripture text that they are embracing in the midst of this pandemic is for the lips of a priest or to preserve knowledge because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty and people seek instruction from his mouth. This comes from the writing of the sacred word of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. In times like these, you know, God is always speaking. But even above the noise and the chatter of the 21st century, we have to learn how to sit and be still to know and be able to distinguish and recognize the voice of God. These servants, these great men of God, each of them in their own right will come. We will have a dialogue. We will listen to what thus says the Lord from them today. I turn this service now into the hands of our pastor, Reverend Pastor Kelly Wallace. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone, again. Praise the Lord. Truly, what a wonderful day it is to be here in the house of the Lord. I am grateful today for what the Lord has allowed in this season. Thank God for his grace and his mercy that brought us through. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank God for mighty men of battle, thank God for thank God. powerful divine messages for Christ. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for you, you, and you. I'm just so excited what the Lord is doing now in this season. And even though there is an epidemic going on, even though, even though, even though your body may be wrapped with pain, even though, even though yet God is still faithful. Yes, yes, yes. Do you know that we serve a faithful and loving God? Yes, we do. Hallelujah. We're going to put bread in the way. We have a wonderful man of God before us. And I thank God that he's in the place. I thank God for his service in the body of Christ. And our goal today is not to dig him up not to boast about what he's doing but to talk about the gospel amen, amen, amen. and worship the God that's dwelt on the inside of him yes, without God yes, we are nothing yes, yes, yes. Is it you just a touch and agree right there yes, without God yes, we are We're going to pray and then we are going to be 
be a position for our dear Lord Bishop. Humble man. Faithful servant to God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. My Lord. I feel the approval of the Spirit here now. Jesus. This day was orchestrated in the heavens before we even made known. Thank God for divine favor. Hallelujah. You just don't know what people go through to get to the place that they destined to be. Glory be to God. Many of us go through shadows of the valley, fighting principalities in high places. You just don't even know. But the calling of your life but take preference over everything every fault every failure the calling of your life is the will of the Lord join with me in prayer dear Lord thank you dear God for your love and kindness and to the mercy thank you Father God for everything that you have said yes to yes Lord God, we worship you. Even if you didn't say yes, we thank you for the no. Because it's for our protection, for our best interest that you said no. So thank you, God, for turning us down. For what we wanted, when we wanted, and how we wanted to come. Lord, you said no. So God, I'm good with that. Because you protect our lives. Thank you, Father God, for this level that we are worship you on. The level of high praise and worship. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us, touching us just enough to allow us to have activities of our limbs, clothes in our right mind, food, shelter, and raiment. Thank you, Lord. I shot my voice. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Fresh wind from heaven. We need you, Lord. The worship don't stop. The praises don't stop. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord.
that allowed the opportunity to come. I cried many nights. Bible said I wept. I don't know about weeping, but I cried. I boohooed day and nights. And I'm gonna tell you what I boohooed about, I cried about, and I know we're gonna hear a lot more about that because a lot of people in ministry, see, when we come upon this platform, this was an encouraging word for those who are coming behind us, the next next generation, the Davids and the Joshuas that's yes. yet coming. Yes. Have you not seen what God has doing? Now, I, I, don't, I don't mean to come against and to uh, say and make a mock of it, but the Lord's decision was he called names over the past six months yes. of mighty men of valor, Okay, and the sisters and the mothers and the aunts and the pastors and the apostles and the bishops, yes, the women also God called. But when he called, he also appointed new vessels. I would say another vessel. It's coming up behind. Just like the encouragement was to Joshua. I was with Moses and I will shall be with you. So our goal within the next few weeks is to help the people of God to be encouraged in the calling of their life. And you will hear some challenging times because just like I, Bishop cried too many times. There was an occasion or two that we didn't agree what the Lord has done. But it is his perfect will. Yeah, his perfect will. So be encouraged today, as we always say, get your journals. Mm -hmm. Get something to write with. Yes. Get your Bibles. Yes, right. Get your oil. Get prepared for what the Lord is going to bless us on today. In Jesus' name. At this time, I had something else I wanted to work out, but if it's flowing, we're going to flow with it. Bear us in mind as we prepare and move things out the way to prepare for what you're about to see and hear on today. It is my great pleasure to introduce to many that may not know him. Some calls him bishop. Some calls him father. Some call him brother. Some call him uncle. My God. Some call him friend. Yes. Shepherd. Yes. I call him brother. Because he has been a brother to me from the first day. He also has been a spiritual father for those who seeking guidance. He has so many things that we're going to hear about the life and the story. I bring before you our dearly loved the overseer of Open House of Deliverance for All People, Bishop Charles
give us a few moments. Just give us a few moments. This is intimacy time. out and be a helping hand to anybody 
that needs assistance. Amen. So Bishop, we're going to open up, praise the Lord, we're going to open up this discussion. I, I, I call this the word exercise. Uh, it come to me some time ago just to be able to break the ice and just to say a few words and uh, in these few words if you uh, can just respond by the first thing that comes to mind. Those who have been uh, watching, uh, we did the Women in Ministry series. Uh, praise the Lord. We had our Pastor Gloria Ellaby. Pastor Gloria Ellaby is the wife of Bishop Charles Ellaby. Amen. We had her right here in this place. And praise the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, mother went through. Yes, sure enough. Mother went through. Taught, and taught about salvation. Yes, she did. Praise the Lord. So, Bishop, we're going to go to the same direction. The words may be similar. It's different when it's coming from a different vessel. But we know it means the same. So we're going to just break forth a few. If, first thing come to mind, Bishop, if you want to elaborate on it, uh, it may be the first word, it may be the topic to flow for this afternoon, whatever the Lord is saying. Uh, uh, if you need to preach, preach it. This is your day. This is your time. This is your diligence of the gospel. Very first word we are going to hear is the word prayer. When you mention that word prayer, mainly talked about communicating with God. I was just watching this morning one of the most important things when we get up is to go into prayer. Yet I'm in a new day. Don't know what this day is going to entail for me. Right. But God already knows. So I need to be in communication with somebody that knows. So prayer is so important. And to the person that I that may say prayer is not effective, I beg the difference. Prayer is effective. Even when it does not look like it's working, it's still working. So prayer is one of the most important things. How could I understand you if I'm not talking to you? All right, that's right. We need to be talking to God above all things. Yes, my wife is in the house. Yes, my grandchildren are in the house. But talking to God is a totally different thing. What they can't do, God can do. So I need to be talking to the one that's able to do all things. Yeah. I don't want I don't want to get a run on because I, I often talk to my um, nephews on the phone and we get on the phone and I'm the only one talking. <laughs> I get a run on and I'm, <clears throat> I'm talking and they trying to get a word in. But when we're talking about the Lord, it's a little bit different. That's right. Street talk is one thing, but when we're talking about the Lord, yes, yes. everybody should have something good to yes. say about God. If it's nothing but he woke me up this morning. That's right. He kept me clothed within my right mind. When I got up out of that bed, yes, Lord. I didn't fall back into the bed. Right. Prayer mm. is the key. Yes. We used to sing a song. My son wrote this song, He's No Longer With Us. Sing it, Bishop. Sing it. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> but it was titled, Prayer is the Keys to the Kingdom. My Lord. Faith unlocks the door. My God. And that's the key. Prayer. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Bible says prayer without ceasing. That's right. Yes. All the time, I can't speak it. Uh -huh. But it's still resting in my spirit all through the day. We can't pray a lot of times when we're at work. Right. We can't pray on the job. Uh -huh. But you can have a praying spirit within your heart. Yes. And if you do that, I want to let you know God will hear That's and he will answer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we heard about prayer. Let's talk about praise. Oh, I'm reminded. My brother is no longer with us. 
we will get the car. Mm. God, if you just give me the car, I'll be to church on Sunday morning. <laughs> I'll make sure the saints get home. Mm -hmm. I'll do all I can. Uh -huh. But the minute God blessed us with the car, Sunday morning, we had a rag in our hand. We were shining the rims, shining the car, praising the car. Uh -huh. yeah. Instead of praising the one that gave the gift. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, God blesses his children. And we forget to do one thing. Open your mouth and say, thank you, God. We have all of these thoughts in our head before God bless us. You just do it for me, Lord. This is what I'll do. And you know God is so grateful and so merciful. He already know what you're going to do. But he still blesses. Basically, he's saying, I'm going to show you yourself. Uh -huh. I heard what you said, but I'm going to show you yourself. What you're going to do after you get the blessing. Is you going to praise me? Uh -huh. Is you going to lift me up? Yeah. Is you going to magnify me? Yeah. Or are you just going to do what me and my brother did with the rain? <laughs> Shine the rims. The rims got to be shining. I, it, this, this money, it's like a take me back month. Mm -hmm. I remember we would get the word of God and get those little small Bibles. Mm -hmm. God bless you with the car. You open up the Bible to a scripture. Uh -huh. Talk about it. And you set it in the window. <laughs> How ignorant when I yeah. look back at it now. Yeah. Yeah. We sit it in the window but we're not putting it in our hand and opening it up to read the scripture. Yes, I'm talking about it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Been there, done that. Uh -huh. So when God, you ask God for something, and he do it, what happens to your tongue uh -huh. after you ask? Mm -hmm. Can't you use that same tongue mm -hmm. and say thank you? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I praise you, God, because I know I could not have done it by myself. Yes, yes. This thing that you've given me, I know I couldn't have gotten it by myself. Mm -hmm. Children of God, what's wrong? Yes, yes. What's wrong? I get a run on. Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm here. Right. Go ahead. It's time to um, I, help him, Bishop. Help him. That's why we're here. Help him, Bishop. Help him. It's time yes. to really. Um, Take inventory. Yes, Lord. Take inventory. Because if you take inventory of your life, as the songwriter said, and you look things over, uh -huh. you will see that you've been blessed. Yes. But in the blessing, God wants you to open up your mouth and testify to what he's doing mm -hmm. and what he's done. That's giving who praise? God praise for what he's done. Because I know I could not have done it by myself. Me resting here today, my Lord, mm. I know it was God. I look back at, I, just listening to you this morning, and I was just thinking to myself, the things and the places that I've been, mm. the things I've seen, mm. Because I won't sit here and say, I've always been saved. I've always yeah. done good. I've always been good. Mm -hmm. But it's God yeah. Yeah. that has always been good. Amen. I'm reminded of what he told Jeremiah even before I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you. Yes, I knew when you were going to mess up. Yes. But I still got a plan for you. Amen. And when I look at God, when I look at him, yes. in spite of my shortcomings, he said, I still got a plan. Yes. And if you allow me, my God. I'll work out my plan in your life. Yes, he will. You got to allow God to do it. Allow God to do it. 
And if you allow God to do it, yes, Jesus. certain things I won't even talk about. Because I'm ashamed of some of the things I've, of places I've been and some of the things that I've done. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to confess to you. Yes. Amen. God sees and he knows. Yes. And if he allowed me to get to this point, mm -hmm. I believe it was for a reason. Amen. When I look back, so many have gone on. Yes. Glory. So many that I was with. They're no longer here, but when I look in the mirror, I still see ah, me. And I say, bless, yes. man of God, yes. and I thank you for keeping me. Yes. Did I answer your question? Sir? Absolutely, Bishop. Thank you so much. And you know what, Bishop, a lot of people feel that uh, be that they haven't passed and they are they was involved in things of the world uh, that God can't use them. Mm -hmm. uh, I thank God that God allowed you to have a life before He called you in. Amen. And even though, praise the Lord, there are so many people out there, so many young folks, the decisions that they have made, their appearance, their lifestyle, tattoos, piercings, and all these other things that they have. Praise the Lord. Yet God can still use you. Yes, yes. Uh, who said that just because you have uh, tattoos or piercings that you won't make it into the kingdom? Yes, amen. God will use everybody. Yes, yes, especially yes. those who are called yes. to him. As you, as you said in the book of Jeremiah, before you was formed in your mother's womb. So that means before you even thought of, before it was a plan, yes. before it even reached to your consciousness, there was already your name called. So it doesn't matter, Bishop, what you're going through, who you're involved in, your lifestyle, but God is ready for you. Yeah. You're coming on in. Yeah. And you know, that's what makes me so much more effective. Mm -hmm. When I talk to people, I'm not talking as a person that's just talking off the top of their head. If I tell you something, mm -hmm. it means I have already experienced it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know what the end is. Mm -hmm. So I thank God where I've been, mm -hmm. what I've been through, because yeah. when I open up my mouth, Amen. I know that 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 I know God will. You through and God will bring you up. Yes, 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 yes. I know. So whether you listen or hear what I'm saying, mm -hmm. I know through my trials and tribulations, I know who he is. Yes. Somebody may say, do you fully know him? No. I'm still learning him day by day. Each day I wake up is something new. This pandemic is something new, but I can tell you this. God will see you through. Amen. This fighting that's going on, God will see you through. The Bible says there is nothing new up under the heaven. All things have already been done. So God already knows. You know what, Bishop? Let's talk about this. The very next question, uh, the very next word, since we, we talked about the this uh, uh, thing that's going on, uh, they gave a name to it, COVID-19, COVID the coronavirus. Uh, let's, let's, let's just spend a few seconds on it because I, after that, I would like, praise the Lord, if he allows, to go into open house deliverance. But let's talk about COVID-19. Um, COVID-19 did some things. Uh, I feel, praise the Lord, and what's your opinion? I feel that uh, it wasn't always something on the negative uh, with dealing with COVID-19. Yes, we're looking at the effect of the virus and what the virus has brought to the table, um, but there are yet still things called God's will. 
They had to reach God's approval. Uh, even though that the decision that God made uh, in regards to uh, this mechanism of COVID-19, God said so. Um, but we had to make some adjustments. And over the last few months, because it's been, I believe, since March that it was brought out, COVID-19. Some probably was experiencing it a little bit earlier, maybe uh, in January or December of last year. I've been hearing a few testimonies from a few people saying, I believe I had it because I had this bad cold and this, it was something different about this cold, it was different. And, and some could say that I had it, I didn't know I had it, but you lived through it. You lived through it. But I, I wanna talk about not so much of the medical terms of the COVID-19, uh, I wanna talk about the effect that it had within the body of Christ. Um, because as you know, you're quite aware of, as long as those who are watching that, uh, last few, I won't even say a few weeks, last few months, um, there was no corporate worship in the sanctuaries. Um, there was a decree that was placed upon this nation um, not to gather into houses of worship. Uh, and that was, uh, that allowed a lot of opinion to form um, within the body of Christ. Um, I feel because one, we have never experienced anything such as this in our lifetime. This uh, pandemic is different, uh, but Bishop, I, I want you to uh, allow the, the spirit to use you mightily um, because now everybody wanna listen. Everybody has formed an opinion about what the church should be doing, when to get back into the house of the Lord, um, when is it time? Uh, there's so many different questions. There are even so, so many leaders uh, that are started back into the house of worship, uh, full-fledged, started back regular routine, praise the Lord. I, 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 want you, I would like you to share with the people of God today uh, in regards of um, COVID-19 within the body of Christ. Now, we can make it personal. We can talk about COVID-19 with the open house deliverance, but I don't want to go that way because we're here representing kingdom. Uh, so I, I want your view of how COVID impact the body of Christ. And also within that, how do you feel about opening up sanctuaries now at this level? Um, we don't hear much of COVID now. But how do you feel about um, let's go back in and let's go back in and let's have worship service because it's over now? Just, just, just share with us your opinion. Before I came down here today, it was a scripture that fell into my head. And it was Proverbs 3. Lean not to your own understanding. And if you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. Mm -hmm. Now I heard, and I'm still hearing a lot about the virus, and I'm watching the news, and I'm watching the people. And the question that you ask is just not a simple question. Because when you look upon the, 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 the actions of the world, I'm reminded when the flag hit Israel, e Egypt, God told them to go inside, mm -hmm. lock the door, don't come out mm -hmm. until his past. Yeah. And when I look at the people, they say lock the church doors, mm -hmm. don't go in, because this virus is serious. Go into your house. Uh -huh. Stay into your house till you receive further notice. But when I look at the people, the people are so disobedient. Mm -hmm. And I, I know somebody's going to get angry with me. And I, I, when I think of the same, what I'm saying, some of these leaders are just as disobedient as the people of the world. Why would I bring 
bring my members into the house and know that that virus, I don't know who coming in with the virus. Do I trust? Yes, I trust God. Don't have nothing to do with me trusting God. But God gave me wisdom and he gave me a little bit of knowledge. And he made us caretakers of his sheep. So should you be using what he gave you? You bring the people in here and somebody gets sick. Uh -huh. And I heard the president a couple of weeks said, now it's time to open up the doors of the church and go back to things, business as usual. But he's getting ready to have, go before the people and talk. And guess what he's telling the people? Hmm. Sign a waiver. Huh? Sign a waiver before we all come together. Don't lean to your own understanding. Ask God. God will let us know when it's time to come back in. And, 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 and Reverend Wallace, this is one of the hardest things for me. We were brought up in the church. Church started in the house. We were brought up in the church. And now to say that we're not in the church, and sometimes it bothers me what the people may be saying. Oh, they was talking about giving God the glory. They was talking about giving God the praise. They was talking about, I trust God. Now they're not opening up the doors. And all of that sound good. But if we open up the door and all of the people come in and somebody get that virus, mm -hmm. they take it back to their job. Mm -hmm. They take it back to their home. Mm -hmm. They take it back to any place that they are associated with. Mm -hmm. But where did they get it? Mm -hmm. If they find out, they find out that they got it from here, do you think that's going to be the end? We told you not to have all of those people in the building. And I don't want to go on and on, but I can sit here and tell you the pastors that died, some that I know, they died. I don't know what their mindset was, and it's not for me to put nobody down. But I say for me in my house, I can't put nobody in jeopardy. What we're doing here, I feel that God had already prepared for this to be done. And then when I look upon the, 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 the riot and the COVID-19, I heard um, the news reporter was asking the pastor, and the pastor was saying, I don't know if it was God or not. I know this is God's doing. The cover is being pulled off of the nation as well as the church. You hear me now? The cover is being pulled off. All of that wickedness, the cover is being pulled off. People got to sit in the house and look at the news. So they're looking at the news, taking all of this in. Everything is being exposed that you might see. So if they ask me, is it God? Yes, it's God. Sometimes God does things that we just, it just don't feel good. But it don't mean that it's not God. The Bible says, when everybody knows the scripture, mm -hmm. we've been there and it for a night. Mm -hmm. But guess what? When all of this is said and done, joy is going to spring forth. And that's going to be a good morning. I applaud you. Thank you so much. Do you see the compassion that he has? People have got to understand that this decision wasn't a decision that we wanted to do. As Bishop said, yes, we are the church. Uh, we want to come together and, and boast about what God is doing. And yes, we want to deliver his message to word. Yes, we want to open up the doors and allow people to come in and be saved and delivered and set free. Yes, but there's a level of wisdom that you must have. People of God, I assure you that there is strategy even going on now, preparing for the reentry within the sanctuary. 
I thank God for the various ministries that come together along with Bishop Ellaby. I thank God for the fellowship, the friendship, and the focus on what to do yeah. when this is all over. We got to prepare ourselves for the entry of those who are unsure and unsaved. For we are called not for the generation of yesterday, but we call for the generation of today. So guess what? Uh, there are new Joshua's, Bishop. There are new David's that's coming. There are consecrated vessels that are coming, taking up the mantle. And I, my heart goes out to those brethren that the Lord has called their names. But they call their names out of a place where it was time. It was time. Their work was done. But God don't remove something but I'll put in a replacement. Yes. For when there is a removal, there is a promotion. Yes. And that's the formula of the kingdom. Something has to be removed in order for something to come into its place. Amen. You want to elaborate? I see you're ready. I'm waiting to hear it. I'm reminded when my mother and my father left to be with the Lord. Now, make no mistake, I was always happy to be in the background, uh -huh. to be in the seats, in the audience, Yes, give me my guitar in my hand. And I was satisfied. But now, they're telling me, you got to step up. I'm going to give you something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how, how strategic God is. Maybe I, sometimes people say you talk too much. But before my mom and my dad passed, they, they set some things in order. And I say they set some things in order. You know when your parents are in possession of something, and when they pass, mm -hmm. first thing they tell you, mm -hmm. you got to sell that and divide it among the siblings. Mm -hmm. I went to the lawyer with my brother. I had this car. I had uh, my dad had co-signed um, for me. And here's the lawyer telling me, you gotta sell that car, you know. What? And divide it. It's only, it's only uh, me and my brother, Eric. So I'm sitting listening to him because every payment that was made on that car, <laughs> I made it. But by his name being on it, he said you would have to come to some kind of agreement or sell it and you all divide the profits from it. Why am I saying that? This church, years before they died, God fixed it where me and Pastor Elby name was on it. So meaning when they passed, nobody couldn't step up and say, oh, well, we're going to have to sell that and get the money. No. God had already secured this place. Amen. To let us know and I can imagine God was saying, I know what y'all going to do with it. But if the rest of them was here long and they had to be partakers, they would have said, sell it. So when I look back at God, that's why I, I, I if nobody else prays, then I got to praise him. If nobody else say thank you, I got to say thank you. Because the songwriter said, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say thank you that I've been blessed. And I'm giving my testimony today. So this is, is, is so much um, bottled up in this spirit. 
but it's, it's all God. I can't take no credit. And if I was to add to it, Pastor Carl gave me Joshua 1. Uh -huh. Moses, thy servant is dead. And you know that scripture that he gave me, and he wrote it out. I still have that scripture upstairs in the Bible. My Lord. So God just don't do something. He affirm what he's doing. Amen. There is a time and a season for everything. Amen. Under the heavens. I just heard that preach at a funeral once. But can you stand and wait for your time? Yeah, your time is coming. You don't have to rush it. Your time is coming. All you have to be is prepared when that time gets here. So even now as we sit here, you may not know, but I always say in my spirit, when I meet people, good or bad is for a reason. One way is going to help me. Whether it's for the good or whether it's for the bad. But I just don't throw anything away. I know that those old people said, you take it. Even if you don't need it, you take it anyway. That's right. Give thanks. Because if you don't need it, somebody else will need it. And you are happy. You are happy to be able to give it to someone else. I don't want to take up all your time. This ain't about me. This is about the God in you. But I say I want to do this. Let's do a little praise break. We're going to have a, a musical selection of tempo. And we're going to get prepared for the second half. We're going to talk about the uh, church. We're going to talk about open house deliverance for all people. Praise the Lord. It's the very next uh, prop you will see on your screen is the logo of the church. And get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready for the best thing that's going to happen. We are going to come right back in about 2.2 seconds. We're going to hear a wonderful up-tempo selection for our Bishop Grandson. God bless. Talented young man. Doing the work. Praise the Lord. We're going to bless us in music at this time. And then we're going to come back for the second half. Stay tuned. We're going to be before you real, real soon to hear more about Bishop Ellaby and open house of deliverance for all people. Amen. Be blessed. Stay tuned. Amen.
Thank God, I thank God, I thank God. I, I would tell y'all that, that was I was assisting him and and with that with my with this guitar right here. <laughs> it 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 sounds good, but let me let me tell you something. The the logo, uh, I want you all to be on the lookout for that logo internationally. It's gonna be on dwellings, it's gonna be on buildings, it's gonna be in programs, it's gonna be all over. Um, I know what, I want you to bring the attention of it because I want you to see God. Yes, Lord. The image is, it says, open house of deliverance for all people. But that image is God. Yes. God is working the details and the interactions and behind the sequences. It's all God. And there is a vision behind that image. As I said earlier, there are some tears looked at that image. There's some moaning, some groaning, there's some arguments, some different opinions. Yeah, they fight. Yes. Arguments, bickering, mumbling, grumbling, all that. Yes, some financial struggles. It's with that image. But it's all God working out the details within that image. So stay tuned. I, I'm holding, uh, praise the Lord, I, I bring back memories when I asked Bishop to bring it down and he went and get it. And this instrument bring back so many memories. Uh, Bishop L.B. and I, we were worshiping together here. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Bishop L.B. was my pastor for many years open house of deliverance to all people. I thank God for the vision. I thank God for the connection of generations, of family, kindred. I thank God. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, the history behind open house of deliverance for all people. So I'm holding the instrument that Bishop L.B. played uh, many times. This is the one. And I, I, I pray and I hope my cousin Jerry Till uh, down south in North Carolina, I, I pray that he, because he, he he took a picture with that bass, and I think that's mine too. But anyway, cause this is it, your brother here. I would love for him to play it, but I know he's not gonna do it. But I'm gonna tell you something. He made this thing talk, and right here in this place, I decided to get off the drums and pick up a bass guitar, and. He would show me how to tune it, show me how to hold it, and show me what the keys was. And he gave me a little one, two, three, and I figured I'm ready for Sunday morning service. And I'm gonna tell you something. I hit every note, whatever note he told me to play, I played the opposite note. But guess what? He let me play. He just smiled and he just turned his guitar up a little bit, but he let me play that taught me, even though it may not be the sound that many want to hear, but it was a joyful noise to the Lord. And that is all that's required, don't worry about it. A joyful noise mine is alright, unto the Lord. And I, I, am, I am excited, I'm grateful, and I thank God for his patience. But there were so many, so many that he took their time with and groomed. He mentioned Pastor Carl. Pastor Carl, I'm pleased to say, uh, he is within the bloodline that runs through my veins. He is one of my oldest brothers. Uh, and he is the pastor of Wallace of Christ. And we all was here worshiping together and praising together. Brothers in the gospel. No fighting, no bickering, just worshiping God and enjoy doing it. And then partaking something so pleasant, so blessful. We used to go in the back and eat. Now, I know y'all gonna say that, that I ain't talking about food. You don't talk about food at all. You know me, I'm all about super fat at times. But let me tell you something. This is, I, I, I would say, storefront anointing, where the pastor knew our names, knew the children, we was willing and wanted to tell the pastor uh, our report card. And 
what's going on in school and everything. And, and, and it was so, so much intimacy in the house. We said, worship together, go back and eat, then come right back and worship some more and go home. And could, didn't want to leave the place. But I thank God for the fellowship. Now, at this time, I, I want to talk about open house and deliverance. Um, you're going to see some photos. Uh, when, you, when we come back to this place, it's a little bit different. There is a lot of memory in this building. It housed a lot of moments. Uh, if you are my friend on social media, I, I captured certain images within this place years ago. It don't look like it do now. We went through a little facelift. And God bless this man and woman of God to invest in kingdom. They have sown seeds scattered in this place. And we are standing in the finished product. It is yet growing and yet things are being added. Not for their benefit, but for God's people. Hear the name. Open house of deliverance. Not for Bishop Elvin. Not for Pastor Elvin. For all people. So he's fulfilling his brand. You know, I'm all for it. If you call yourself something, you have to live that life. So I, I'm going to bring up a few uh, photos that I have received in his area. That when you come here and you worship with core ministries or open house of deliverance or all the other body of Christ, big up to Pastor Meyer and, and Archbishop and to all who comes together in agreement here in this dwelling. We all worship in the same God. Hallelujah. So Bishop, I, I, I want to start off with if I can uh, tell us about the guitar moments. Because you are a, you still is a wonderful, wonderful musician, producer, songwriter, you have traveled and sung with some wonderful and blessed groups. But I want you to talk about the group that we are seeing. We are seeing an image of the sensational gospel wings. And I pick up this photo. You see it right there on your device. Uh, praise the Lord. Bishop, uh, can you give us a, uh, tell us who is in the picture? Alexander Richburg, my godson, my god brother. There was Eric Ellaby, my brother. Eugene Ellaby, my brother. My son, Romel Ellaby, and my dad. And also me. Now, this picture that you are seeing there, this group was formed in, I think, 1950, wow, six or 57. Don't hold me to that. But there is a man that still lives, two men. And they was the original uh, people that helped form the group with my dad. Now, the way that I got with the group, I always wanted to go with my dad. And he wouldn't take me. His words to me is, you talk too much. That's why you can't go. But my older brother, which he, 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 he's going on to be with the Lord now, he would take him. So there was the, one of the, the, the former members of the group, he's still li living today. I went by his house because I wanted to start an autobiography of the group, he would tell me this, um, go in the house, because we had all of those instruments in the house, because my dad had all of that equipment. He was the manager. And he said, go in the house and take that bass guitar and get you some records and emulate what you hear on the records. 
I did exactly what he told me. And after a while, I got good at it. No longer had to beg my dad. Now my dad was making me go. Oh. So I jumped from that to the lead guitar. And all of this stuff, we were self-trained. Mm -hmm. That's why Sunday, when I was in here Sunday, my message was train up a child in the way that it should go. When it is old, it shall not depart from the training. We were trained. Mm -hmm. Church, we were trained in church. Mm -hmm. We were trained in singing ability as well as music ability. Mm -hmm. So once I started playing, you know, uh, when you know good, nobody wants you to help. That's right. But once they find out that you can hit a good note, everybody wants you to help. So in the, in the process of that, the way this, the picture you see now, mm -hmm. a lot of the old members had, had left the group. A lot of them had died. Some of them had went about doing other things. So it just left our family except for my uh, God uh, brother, it just left us. So now we got to get material, and that's why I say thank God. Songs was coming from everywhere. Not songs we heard on the radio, but God was giving us material to use. And it was material, not rock and roll material that we changed up, but God was giving us songs in our head. And a lot of those songs, right today, people ask me, um, you're not singing anymore. Can we record this material that you got? That's why I, I, I still got to go back and say, when you asked about the praise, uh -huh. can't praise myself. Can't praise no ability. Thank God for Deacon Campbell. His name was Deacon Campbell. I got to mention his name. He's yet still alive. Thank God, Dick. He's the one that instructed me into getting on that, that uh, guitar and that bass guitar. And in the midst of that, that was a blessing. I remember I would go some places and play. And you could feel, I could feel the anointing in my hand, and I never understood it. Wow. My mother told me, uh, Charles, we used to work together. There is something different about you. Out of all of my children, there is something about you. Your hands are anointed. And when I would play that guitar, I could feel the anointing in my hand. Don't play as I once did. But there is something about a skillful player uh -huh. and an anointed player. When the anointing of the Holy Ghost is in the midst, I agree. it makes a big difference. That's right. You can have all of that musical knowledge, but there is something when it comes together with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. What makes the difference? I, I was sitting here one day and a young man came into church. He was all bummed up. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know. Uh, my mindset, because I already told you I wasn't always in the church good. When I looked at this young man, I said, now, he don't look like he can do anything. Mm -hmm. He asking me for my guitar. I'm saying, he don't even look like he can play. But when I passed the instrument to him, and he began to play, I could see the skill and the Holy Spirit upon him while he played. Okay. That's why I could, I could understand the scripture. God said, I don't look out at the outward appearance. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I looked at how he was dressed. Yeah. How he came into the church. Yeah. God said, I don't even look at that. Mm -hmm. I look at the heart, and that's how I judge the heart. And that taught me a lesson that day. You don't look at how people come in or how you think they should be. Look on their heart. Look on their heart. And the reason why I believe um, for me, 
I know some people that um, they couldn't play that well. Mm. Never tried to put them down. That's right. Gave them some of my equipment. Yes, he has. Always encouraged them. And I sit back and watch the people that's around. I'm not playing with them. Mm -hmm. They can't play. Mm -hmm. Me? Never was like that. The same way somebody took up time with me. Yeah. And that's what we have to learn. Mm -hmm. As children of God, we have to learn how to take up time that's right, that's right. with the people, with the children. Yes, yes. That's why we're still here. Mm -hmm. No, the door's not open. But don't mean that we're not in here serving the Lord. Don't mean that we're not preparing the next generation to be ready and prepared to go yeah. forward. Yeah. Yes. Might not see us on the camera. Uh -huh. Might not see us on YouTube. But we are still working. We're still working. And we are preparing for the next generation Amen. to come. Amen. Amen. And that's what we're supposed to do. I'm reminded. I told I don't know how to keep saying I get a run on. I ain't gonna bother, I ain't gonna stop you. I, I was talking to my nephew uh, yesterday. Darren McLeod. And I looked at the history of um, Curtis Mayfield. Uh -huh. And all the stuff that Curtis Mayfield had done, he said he had one regret. The way that he played his guitar mm. and the way that he tuned it. Mm. He's so sorry that he never showed anyone else that. So if I leave today, he's no longer with us. His words is, that will go along with me. Because I never took the time to show anybody else. And that's the problem with when I would, we would go around singing. Uh -huh. You will find so much uh, foolishness among the groups. Nobody really wanted to help the other one. That's right. Okay. That's right. When you're on a low level, mm -hmm. everybody working together. Mm -hmm. But when you start elevating to the next level, it's like a, 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 a competing. Yeah, competition, yeah. Mm -hmm. And God ain't about no competition. Sure not. Yeah. So when I look, for me, if you ask me and I'm able to show it to you, I'll do just that. I would ask people and they would say, um, you already know how to do it. If I knew how to do it, why would I ask you? That's right. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Why would I come and ask you, how did you make that call? Mm -hmm. How did you sing in that note? And you tell me you already know. That's why I'm asking you. So I thank God for the ones thank God. that I asked and they took the time to show me. Yeah. And I'll go right back and do the same. I will take the time out yes, you have. to show you what we've learned in the church. Mm -hmm. I don't mind taking the time out to show you because in the process of showing you, I'm learning also. You learn also. Yeah, yeah I'm learning. Amen. And he's telling me the truth, saints. I'm telling you, I was in here, thought I was just a cooling gang. I was just strong. And he would just sit there and smile, and I'm just sitting there smiling, probably messing everything up. But guess what? He let me play. And there were so many that came up behind us, and the Lord has showed them and skilled their, their craft. And we got some young men out there that wasn't self, that wasn't taught by uh, a professor, that they have been taught and led by the Holy Spirit, could play better than any of the famous ones out there. Yes, yes. And I thank God that he taught, Bishop Ellaby was teaching the young people, it was not all about the dollar. It's not all about the money, it's all about the gift, it's all about doing what God said to do. See, back then when we was coming up, it wasn't all about getting paid and getting this amount of money a week. It was it was the, having the Lord use you, your talent and, yeah. and strengthening your, yeah. your skill and 
and, and the Lord will allow me to play from other various platforms. So many musicians today is playing for some major platforms out there all over the world. And they started here within the church. Praise the Lord. And we pray that the Lord will yet keep them and preserve them. I'm reminded also of, of, of Chief Apostle Anderson. We had a celebration for the musicians at Wild Supper Christ. And Bishop Anderson, being a musician himself, um, he gave a word of encouragement to the musicians, the young people that was coming up. And we was like, wow, you know, we thought we was it. You know, it was a little offering time. We got a little ice cream money, Father was saying, you know, just a little something, something to say we love you. And Bishop Anderson got up and just flipped the script. I would never forget those words many years ago. Never forget those words. He was all in his apostolic right. He was up there, spoken tongue to seal it, and sat down. He said, I pray that you use your gift for the glory of God. Yes. If not, I pray that the Lord take it from you. That shook me so bad. Oh my goodness. But I tell you, that's how serious the passion that our leaders have for their children, making sure that we will be in line. I thank God for you, Bishop, and so many others took the time to teach the young the way. Praise the Lord. I just want to move on to a few more photographs. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to take it down to a powerful apostle. Praise the Lord. A mighty man of valor. I thank God for him. I thank God for his life and the legacy that he has. But I know he also holds a special place in your heart and in your life. If you could just expound us a little bit of this beautiful and wonderful man of God. Yes, I could. That man of God was my brother in law. And the teaching that he gave, the Bible, uh, the, 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 there is a saying, give your flowers while they live. Because once they're going on, they can't smell those flowers. I can say for him, he was strategic in his teaching. He was firm, but he was strategic in it. And his thing was he wanted to make sure that you got what he was teaching. And even after he had left the scene, there was something that was left in you that will be a, that when they saw you didn't even have to see him anymore. It's, it's like when they saw the disciples, they, they said, I knew that was with Jesus because there's something different about them. And with him, he left something in me. My God. Yes, he was hard. Mm. Many times I, he would preach and I would have my shoes out like this, tapping my feet. But he would say something, I would have to pull my feet in because he stepped on me. But his love was so strong that I had to pull my feet right back out. And still go right back along with him and give him gold. A wise woman told me these words. She said, God is going to place some men around you. My God. That's going to help you. And this woman with wisdom probably thought I forgot those words. My God. But every time when I go back and look, people will not look at you. Praise God. Men of wisdom God has placed around me. Oh my God. With him, my brother-in-law, I can grab a quote that he said that still sticks in my heart. My God. And I know that we're going to talk about your dad. Mm. Your dad was the same. Yeah. I remember yeah. just as well, he told me these words. He said, Pastor, a soft orange gets squeezed a lot. When he said that, 
I had to take it back and try to understand what he was saying. But he was telling me then as a leader, you can't always be so soft because if you keep being so soft, you're going to get squeezed. And pretty soon all of that juice is going to come out. So men of wisdom all through my life. And I was the type that was soaking all in. Might not understood it then, but I can take what they said, even when it hurt. I could take it because sooner or later what they said was for my good. Even though I didn't understand what was saying, what they were saying to me. But when I step back and look at it, it's like you step out of your body and look back. All that they said, they wasn't trying to hurt you. But in order to make you strong, these are the things that had to be done. Because the time that we live in it now, uh, you got to be strong. The Bible speaks about men will be, hearts will be failing. Yes. When they look upon the things that's coming upon this earth, yes. you got to have some strong foundation and you got to be strong. And they will prepare me then. Yes, Lord. Even when I didn't know. Somebody may say, well, who is that? A woman with all the wisdom that said that to you. My mom left that, dad gone. It was my wife. My God. She said, God, don't worry. God going to send you some strong, able men. Thank you, Jesus. And they want to help build this ministry. Sometimes we think the time is then. But we are not walking in our time. We are walking in God's time. Thank you, Jesus. And God's time is a little bit different than ours. ashamed and let the tears flow. Because I can say without a shadow of a doubt, it was all God. It's all God. And I can say thank you for keeping me for a time like this. I'm not going to say excuse. Because it's not Tears of sadness. Sad. This is tears of joy. Yeah. Who wouldn't serve a God yeah. like this? Yeah. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? That even when you don't deserve, yes, Jesus. He still keeps giving. Yeah. Yeah. Even through this pandemic. I don't know how much time I got. All the time you're willing to give. I think uh, I feel like the prophet <laughs> when God sent them out into the wilderness when there was a famine in the land he did as God told him. God made sure that he ate Devastation that's going on now. God continue to show Himself mighty and show yeah. Himself strong. Yeah. We are not begging for food. Matter of fact, people have brought us food. Yes. It's like God has been sending people to us. Oh my God. People, God has sent people even to help with the church. We're not taking up no offering in the church. Things 
still got to be, he still got to be there. Yeah. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those that don't know it, hmm. don't take my word for it. That's right. Seek him out for yourself. The time is now. They will say, get in a hurry and do it now. Serve the Lord. Yes. While you have the opportunity and while you have the time. Thank you, God. The next moment is not promised. The saints are saying we waiting for God to crack the sky. But my nephew told me years ago, when you lay down and don't rise up that morning or that night, your sky's already cracked. What more can you do? I say to the young and the old, oh God. do what you can. Do what you can. Why you can. Tomorrow, the next hour, the next minute is not promised to us. Songwriter said, only what you do for Christ. The mother would sing that song here in the church. Every Sunday. Only what you do for Christ would love. Yes. And even at our old age, she will continue to sing that song. Me and my wife would pick her up. Go and pick her up and she was in the wheelchair. We will put that wheelchair in the trunk, mm. put her in the back seat, and made sure she got to the house of the Lord, because that was her mindset. And once she got in the house of the Lord, I can hear her say, Only what you do for Christ. Church go all the way back to when we were little. Uh 
Oh my God. One, two, three. Church started in 235 A on your street. Right in the kitchen. My God. And it was called a prayer bed. Amen. Under Pastor Inez Madison. And that's how we met your day. Okay. And we will get, I never forget, they will be having church service in the kitchen. And we as little children, not about no church service. Mm -hmm. They will call us into the kitchen. That's why I can't get so upset about the little boys when they, yeah. they're not too interested now because been there, done that. Uh -huh. They would tell us, turn that TV off and come on in the kitchen. And we have a service. And my word is the devil. The Flintstones just came on. <laughs> and now they, they're telling us to turn the TV on. But when I look back, I go right back to that scripture. Train up a child in the way that it should go. And even in then, even then they were training us. That's right. That's right. We didn't know it, but they were training us then. And then the Bible lets us know when they get when he when he gets he get old. They won't depart from the training. Now they didn't say from the, the moment that they've been trained that in the middle they might stray away. Mm -hmm. But it's like a rope. Tied around the saints of God. And even when they get so far, it's like somebody is holding that rope and begin to tug on that rope and pull them right back in. So again, I go back to the praise. I praise. I got to thank them for what they did. And out of that kitchen, all churches came out of that kitchen. Wow. And we are one of the churches that came from out of that kitchen. Somebody say, I don't hear no woman preaching. And the men may get mad with me. But that's all right. That's all right. If it had not been for some of the women preachers, there would be no church. So when it comes to that, I hear what you say, mm -hmm. but I don't believe what you say. I hear what you're saying. If you didn't know, now you know. Bishop, before we wrap up, I want to explore one area. There are two more pictures that I want everyone to see. I would like for you to share with us the church, the beginning of Open House of Deliverance. There was a powerful vessel. Her name was Sister Pastor Edie. She made some great biscuits, y'all. Y'all understand. Butter. She was the Assistant pastor of Open House of Deliverance for All People, along with the pastor, your mom. By your mother's side was your father, elder in the Lord's Church. I want you to talk about all three as we prop up the photos. It's going to bring, for me, it's bringing back so many memories of the time with the time, the time we had in this place. If you knew about Open House Delivery back then in the 80s, telling you, telling you the music, the guitars, uh, his brother Eric was like, in my, his, he was the best drunk. What he used to do on a drunk roll was unheard of. I thank God that he's accepted in his walk in ministry even now in the South. Amen. Big up to my dear brother, yeah. Eric Ellaby. And I, I want you to talk about Assistant Pastor Edie and uh, I want you to talk about, you let me tell her, I told her about the biscuits, but I want you to talk about, you know, the 
the teaching and the position that she held within the church, the assistant, your mom's best bestie. That wonderful smile, always smiling. Don't let that smile fool you. She'll put you in your place in a heartbeat. She always ministered the gospel. She always came out of Isaiah. So I mean, some folks a difficult prophetic book. She came out of it. She had a robe on. She gave it and gave you a beautiful song. But I want to hear you say it. And also do right after that talk about your mom and your dad as being the founders. You are the legacy carrier. And then after that, to your satisfaction, I would like for you to impart and give an encouraging word to the leaders that's coming up now that need to hear this word because they are challenged also with some things within the world. Let them know what they need, Bishop. Then we are going to pray. Thank God for this day. A few announcements and then we are going to leave and depart. Tell us about Assistant Pastor Elevy. I mean, forgive me. Sister Pastor Edie, it just flows, praise the Lord, and saying, but let's talk about uh, Sister Pastor Edie. Sister Pastor Edie. We call them Lulu. Sister Pastor Edie was around when I was all of this, that's why I say that 235 in Monroe Street, it, it, it holds a special place. And my dad's sister and my uncle, they still at that, that house. They up in age now. They can't do like they used to do. But they still in that house. And when I go to visit them, I go right into that kitchen huh. where we used to have service. Now, when it comes to um, Sister Pastor E, Sister Pastor E was a great singer. Yes. Before she was a preacher, Sister Pastor E was a great singer. And we would, uh, they would have, they don't have it now like they used to have. Churches would have morning service, and then in the afternoon they would have a program. And they would invite different choirs and different groups to the church. They don't, they don't do it now, because now it's all about money. If you're not able to pay the group, they're not coming. But back then, we were just so happy to sing. Yeah. And Sister Pastor Edie, she used to sing with my mother. Mm -hmm. The name of the group was the Christian Is. All right. And it was her, my mother, Minnie Johnson. My God. Um, Sarah May and Georgia May. My God. And they would sing, and it was it wasn't really a competition, but it would be the Christian Nairs against my dad um group, the Gospel Wing. Uh -huh. But they would all be on the same program, you know, they were young. And we would go around singing. That's why when you would see Sister Pastor when she preached, uh -huh. she would sing. And she could out sing some That's of the right. best of, of them. That's right. She was skilled in the singing. And then when the anointing of the Holy Ghost came in and she began to open up her mouth and preach the word of God. That's right. That's right. That's what made the difference. That's right. Yeah, amen. So, Sister Pastor Edie, I've been knowing her. And when you talk about cooking, Woo! People are brag about our uh, day church food, but uh, we had some of the best cooks here. Amen. In the church, we had some. I, there was a friend of mine, he hadn't been too long past. He passed, I think, last month. And we would get on the phone, and he would still tell me about Pastor E cooking those pies. Yes, Lord. I got another friend, they would say, Pastor Edie would get those beans and stuff and cook them up. Whatever she did, 
She did it as skillfully as she could. Singing, preaching, cooking, loving. And that smile that you said, I'm reminded of my brother. My brother said, every time I see you, Lulu, you smile. <laughs> you smile and then laugh. And what are you smiling and laughing about? But he didn't understand. Neither did I. She had the joy on the inside. of the Lord on the inside. Hallelujah. And you said she could be strict. I remember my niece. I pray I'm not talking too much. Go ahead. She had got hit by the car in front of the church. Oh my gosh. But we also had a church on Eastern Parkway. And she was running across the street to get to my dad and didn't pay attention. And the car hit and knocked her up. And she was in the hospital unconscious, stayed unconscious for a while. We didn't think she was going to make it. And me and her mother would go there and we would be around the bed praying. And Sister Pastor Edie said this. Mm. She said, you are here praying, but the main thing God want to hear from y'all, I repent. Forgive me for my wrongdoings. That's what he want to hear from y'all. Y'all, it's good that you're here. But the Bible said the prayer of a what? Righteous. Righteous man availeth much. Yes, God hears. But she tried to get it over to me, and it stuck in my head. God want to hear you say, I humble myself yeah. under your mighty hand that you might exhort me when the right time is. I repent. Lord, please forgive me. Lord, please forgive me. I said that the same because my mind said when we were there, we was in some mess. Huh. Yeah, we was in some mess. Yeah. But it's just like I told you about the Bible, that we would get, open it up and sit it on the windshield, mm -hmm. but you don't open it up and read it. Mm -hmm. My mom and my dad, mm. Some people don't have a, they just have the mom in the house. Right. Or they just have the dad in the house. Some children can't say that I had both of them. Right. That's true, Bishop. In the house. But for me, I can say I had my mom and my dad in the house with me. Never heard them curse. Never seen them argue. I didn't say that they didn't. But I never saw it. And they were so protective of their children. Not to the point that they would say we would do no wrong. I never forget. Somebody had came to my mom and told her some story that um, they saw us doing some things. And my mother said this to them. When they not, not around us, I don't know what they're doing. But when they around us, they're not going to do that. They never got up and said, well, not my child. They never said that. I look at the news sometimes, the, the child be winning and shot up 25 people and the first thing the mother say, not my child, my child didn't do that. That's not my son, my, my, my children are good. Never heard my mother and father say that. Well, they know we are something to do some stuff when we get behind their back. But I still go back to that scripture. 
They knew the training that they gave us. And they knew that sooner or later that training hit. You can only go so far when you get the right training. Mm -hmm. So with my mom and dad, and they showed us nothing but love, from the time that we were small, they were always, it was always about business. A friend of mine brought that up to me some years ago. He said, your, 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 your family's always got some kind of business they got open, from the candy store to the restaurant, to the cab stand, to the real estate, to the dry cleaning, to the record shop. You could just go on and on. They were always in some kind of business. But I'm, I shy away from even when I mentioned that because I was at work one day and I was talking to my boss, this maybe was about 15 years ago. And I was talking about the family, all the things that they were doing, that they had. And he left one word in my spirit. Out of all of those things that you had, you said they had, what can you say they have now? Mm. Out of it. So it's good to have had, but what did you retain? I can imagine that they was looking down upon me right now. Right now. They would say, you did well. You did well. You didn't always do what I told you to do. And it's funny to me now, my dad would say, you got a hard head, nobody can tell you nothing. Mm. But I can respond to this. To those that have that hard head, the hard head makes us soft, and I'll let you finish that. <laughs> so in all, Get wisdom, get knowledge and understanding. All of that's good, but if you don't put it to effect, what good is it? Now, if I had to say something, I hope I answered your question. Yes. <laughs> if I had to say something to the young Joshua's that's coming along, I believe he gave me that scripture for a reason this morning. Go to that Proverbs 3 and start reading for more. Of course, for me, when I look at a lot of the young ones that's coming along, it's about preaching and it's about the money. And yes, it takes preaching to change the hearts of the people. It takes money to run the church. But the Bible says if you have no love, mm. you just like a tinkling symbol. That's what it says. You can speak all the right words and people will be getting saved under the words that you speak. But it will be no bell to you. Get the word. And my God, I know you're going to need the money to make the ministry go. But don't forget the main ingredient. Love. Love for your people. Not just love in your home. Not just love in the church home. But even when you leave the church home, that that love will be spread abroad. I'm reminded of Pastor Carl. Joshua 1. Take that scripture and open it up and see what it says. Moses, my servant and dead. But the same way that I was with Moses, I'll be with you. But the only way that's going to take place, if you lean not to your own understanding, 
Not my way, but God's way. Whatever takes place, let it be God's way. I'm going to acknowledge him above all things, even when I don't think it's working for my good. I'm going to still acknowledge him. He said he's not a man that he should lie. Shall not lie. He said he would direct our path. So in this season that we're in, open up your eyes. But not just your natural eyes. Pray that God remove the scales from the spiritual part of your eyes. And if he does that for you, when you look, you won't see this devastation. You will see his hands right in the midst, staring up the pot. They were saying he's soon to come. They were saying that from a little child. God is soon to come. Somebody said, well, he didn't come yet. He must not be coming. Huh. He's coming. But the Bible lets us know that hell is enlarging itself. My God. Not that he meant for us to go. But some people are so hell bent on going. The time is now, children. Thank God. Boys and girls, the time is now. Surrender from the pulpit to the pews. Make sure that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know. Somebody said, tied up, tangled up in Christ Jesus.
that you may resume what you have planned. God be your strength that you will be successful in your day and your outgoing. In Jesus' name. Lord, thank you, dear God, again for the blessings. Thank you, dear God, for the word today. Dear Lord, for thy servant, God, increase, increase, increase. Increase, oh God. Put in there, Lord, what was ruled out of him. And Lord, thank you for the healing that's going to his body. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we confess it right now. We decree and declare total healing in the name of Jesus. Heal your people right now, God. Thank you for this time of the wonderful word that's set before thee, O Lord. Bless the ministry. House to house, let it grow, God, beyond measure. It's your time, God. Thank you for your season and your time being in this season. We say thank you and amen and amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful remainder of your evening. God bless you. We will come again in Jesus' name. Be blessed, everyone. Be blessed.